Hey, welcome. So let's talk about artificial intelligence. You hear it everywhere, right? It's the buzzword, the thing that's going to change everything. But you know, behind all that hype, there is just a ton of confusion. So let's just dive right in and actually unpack what AI is, how it works, and most importantly, why any of it matters to us. Okay, let's just get to the big one right off the bat. What is AI really? I mean, if you feel like you've heard a dozen different definitions for it, you are not alone. It's a term that's gotten so big, so broad, that even the people who build the stuff don't always agree on what it means. You know, a huge part of the problem is the giant gap between science fiction and what's actually real. We've all seen the movies, right? We imagine these conscious thinking robots. But the reality, what we have today, is basically really, really smart software that's designed to do one thing, find patterns and perform a very specific job. So in this first part, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna peel back that first layer and try to get past the whole Hollywood fantasy to really understand the tools that are being built and used in the real world right now. And here's why it's so confusing. The term AI has become what experts call overloaded. I mean, for some people, it's just any kind of automation. For others, it has to be a system that actually learns. And for another group, it's all about trying to simulate how a human brain thinks. This ambiguity, this is the real reason it's so hard to pin down. To really get a handle on it, there is one absolutely crucial distinction you have to make. On one hand, you've got general AI. This is the stuff of science fiction. Human-level smarts can do absolutely anything. That is still completely hypothetical. Then you have what actually exists today, narrow AI. And listen, every single AI you have ever used is a narrow AI. It's a specialist, a genius at just one thing, whether that's understanding what you say, recognizing a face in a photo, or planning the fastest route. Okay, so if all the AI we have today is built for these super specific tasks, how in the world does it get so good at them? Well, that brings us to how these systems actually learn, because the whole approach has gone through this massive revolutionary change. This is it. This is where the real revolution happened. The old way, what you could call classical AI, was all about rigid rules. Programmers would painstakingly write out thousands of if this, then that instructions. But modern AI, machine learning, totally flipped the script. Instead of feeding the computer a bunch of rules, we just feed it a mountain of examples and let it figure out the patterns for itself. And this data-first approach really comes in three main flavors. First, you've got supervised learning. This is where you give the AI a ton of labeled data, like thousands of photos all labeled cat, and it learns what a cat looks like. Then there's unsupervised learning. Here, you just dump a huge unlabeled pile of data on it, and its job is to find the hidden groups or patterns all by itself. And finally, there's reinforcement learning, where the AI learns by trial and error, almost like playing a video game. It gets points for good moves, and it learns to avoid the bad ones. Now, this whole process of learning from data, it isn't magic. Not at all. It's actually a pretty methodical process, almost like a factory assembly line. So let's take a look at the step-by-step -step recipe for building a typical AI model. It almost always follows this standard pipeline. First, you have to clearly define the problem you're trying to solve. Then you find the data. That's the fuel for the whole engine. Critically, you have to clean that data. After that, you pick the right kind of model, you train it on your clean data, you test it to see how well it actually works, and then finally, you deploy it so people can use it. And here's a little secret about building AI that most people don't realize. We imagine these brilliant engineers writing complex code all day. But the reality is, most of their time and effort, we're talking the vast majority of it, is spent on step three, cleaning the data. See, raw data from the real world is always messy. It's incomplete, it's full of errors, and getting it ready is this essential but often painstaking job. Okay, so now that we've got a sense of how an AI model is built, we have to talk about its limits, because even an AI that seems incredibly smart can have some serious blind spots and can make some really big mistakes. To get why AI can fail, you have to burn this one rule into your brain. An AI model is only a reflection of the data we feed it. That's it. It doesn't actually know anything about the real world. It only knows the patterns that were in its training data. So if your data is biased or incomplete or just plain wrong, guess what? The model is going to be biased, incomplete, and wrong too. And the consequences of this can be huge. In healthcare, for example, a model trained mostly on data from one group of people might make totally inaccurate predictions for another. In aviation, a system might just fail when it encounters a scenario it was never shown in training. This becomes a systemic problem, where the AI doesn't just learn the inequalities that already exist in our society, it can actually make them worse, amplifying them at a massive scale. 
But beyond bias, there's another really big weakness you need to know about, brittleness. AI models don't get things. They don't understand concepts the way we do. They are just unbelievably complex pattern matching machines. And what that means is they can be tricked in ways that seem completely absurd to a human. Get this, this is an amazing example of that fragility. Researchers have shown that by changing just a handful of pixels in a picture, changes that you and I would never even notice, they can fool a top of the line AI into thinking a school bus is an ostrich. Seriously, it's just a wild reminder that these systems aren't really seeing what they're looking at. So, given that these things are so powerful, but also have these really serious limitations, how should we even think about using them? And that brings us to our final and maybe the most important section, how we move from the technical question of, can we build this, to the much harder ethical question of, should we? And here's a really useful framework for that, a set of key questions that we should be asking about any AI system. Number one, what is the actual goal here? Two. What data is it using? And does that data truly represent the real world? Three, what kind of model is it? And can we actually understand why it makes the decisions it makes? And four, maybe the most important one of all, how accurate is it? And what happens when it gets it wrong? What's the cost of failure? Because at the end of the day, AI is a tool. It's not a solution on its own. Its true power only gets unlocked when it's pointed very carefully at a clear goal, one that's guided by our values. Just using AI for the sake of using the cool new tech? Well, that's a recipe for distraction, or even worse. And we always have to remember its limits. Look, AI isn't going to solve systemic poverty. It's not going to solve drug addiction. These are fundamentally human problems, and they require social and political and economic solutions, not just a better algorithm. Thinking that technology can magically fix everything is a really dangerous trap to fall into. So as we wrap this up, the key takeaway is really this. The technology is moving at a dizzying speed. The real challenge for us isn't just building more powerful AI. It's building the wisdom to use it correctly. It's an incredibly powerful tool, no doubt. But the most important questions are the ones we need to ask ourselves before we ever decide to turn it on.